Hi, it's Kentex here with a new series of videos all about gaming Linux from scratch or GLFS. So from the main menu we can access the GLFS web page by clicking here or this link down here and it gives you some background as to what GLFS is all about here um, and basically it's some instructions which in the same way that MLFS was based on LFS, the base um, project, if you like. GLFS is kind of based on BLFS. Um, you'll recognize, especially the first few uh, tools that are compiled, uh, pretty standard if you want to enable your LFS build to be able to download and uh, gain access to web pages and so on. It's pretty standard sort of, you know, wget stuff. Um, I think PAM gets installed as well for added security. So that's quite recognizable. There are other packages that obviously been pulled from BLFS to get X Windows installed um, because obviously gaming requires graphics and the two main project or packages that are targeted within GLFS are Steam and Wine. So Steam obviously is a platform, a content delivery platform for gaming mainly, um, although it does have other types of software. Uh, gaming is probably represents 99% of what's available through that platform. And Wine which stands for one is not an emulator, is a compatibility layer to allow Windows programs to be run natively on a Linux system. And they both require a multi-lib system. Steam, despite the fact it's got many of the latest AAA gaming titles, is still a partly 32-bit binary, um, as, as are many of the games that it, it hosts as well. So... Having a multi-lib is essential. Um, and Wine, that can be useful. Uh, you may have some old software that won't run on modern systems or uh, will only run, run on an old version of Windows that you want to um, run. And obviously older versions of Windows are not supported anymore and it may make it more stable or allow you to run it on modern hardware um, due to the fact that you haven't got access to the older hardware that that software might run on. So um, it gives you an option for that. Um, I'll give you an interesting side about a bit of my history um, with Linux and, and Wine. I tried to use Wine um, in the late 90s as a way of getting into Linux and I think Wine had been around for a few years at that time. Um, but I don't know whether it was me with my lack of knowledge of Linux or whether it was the fact that the project was still quite young then, but I couldn't really get it to work. I got a couple of things to work, but I had errors and so on. And I came to the conclusion that, well, if I really want to learn Linux, I've got to force, force myself to learn Linux and just forget about Windows completely. And that's the way I went. Um, and Linux from scratch was one one way that I did that. There were other methods obviously you know such as reading books i went on a few courses and so on um but yeah i thought well yeah i'm just hanging on to windows really so i i never did use wine so when i come to install wine you'll see that i don't know much about it at all um but i've managed to pick up enough to get it going uh, when i was testing glfs so if I do do something daft, that that's the reason why I don't I don't really know anything about wine at all. Um, but yeah, it's it was that that was my way. That's the thing that drove me to to force me to learn Linux was to avoid wine completely. So I would like to give you the same advice not to use wine as a crutch to get into Linux. Well, I presume you're not going to use it because you're building gaming Linux from scratch, from source compiled. Um, 
programs. Um, but having said that, reading this page here, it does give you indications of other reasons to use one, as, as I've already mentioned, that you might want to use software that won't run on modern Windows or, as I think it says there, that... Um, or it might be on the MLFS page, that one of the drivers for MLFS was to get a 32-bit printer driver working. Well, the same could be said for Windows. You may have a 32-bit uh, printer driver that has to be used in Windows, um, so that may be a reason for using Wine. Um, I did have a few issues with Wine, but I think that was down to uh, some instructions that either I hadn't followed correctly or, um, again, one of the issues I've currently got with the way they've got the, the page layout of the instructions is that it's not immediately obvious to scroll all the way to the bottom of the page. So I think I might have missed some instructions out, but I managed to fix the build and get it working. The only issue that I couldn't resolve, and I still don't know whether it's something I've done or something with the instructions, was I couldn't completely get a windows uh, now what was it oh it was steam i couldn't get it to work completely well it seemed to be looking for um i wish i'd made a note, note of this now i can't i did get steam working um but there was some issue it might have been getting Steam working through win the Windows compatibility layer through Wine. There was some issue where it, the Steam installer knew it was on a 32-bit machine, but for some reason it kept on issuing an error where it was trying to access 64-bit software or 64-bit library, and obviously Steam can't use that. So that was the issue I had, but um, I'm hoping that a second time round of installation that either, either it that won't happen and it'll prove that I did something wrong or misinterpreted some part of the book. Or if it does happen again, then there's obviously some other issue um, that maybe needs to be uh, resolved with the instructions. So um, it'd be interesting to see how that works. But despite that, I did manage to prove that the um, Steam worked and uh, Wine worked as well. So I did, I did, get enough working to prove that both these were installed in, in, enough to show that they were working. Um, one other issue I had was with the graphics card. Now, the laptop that I've been building, well, Linux from scratch 12.3 on originally at the beginning of March 2025, and MLFS, which I've just built um, in the latter half of March, um, it's got an NVIDIA graphics card built in, a 940M, which is part of the reason why I'm using this to do this, because it's spare and it's got a, an NVIDIA card. Um, and as you saw from the previous videos, I've, I um, had some issues with that, which I had to fix. That means that um, I may have problems showing the screen. I'm hoping that once I get the NVIDIA drivers installed, that that won't be a problem. Um, but I've had to revert back to the Intel driver just to show the actual screen, to allow the green screen grabber to work with the HDMI port. So I'm, I'm not too sure how that's going to pan out. Um, it also means the next video you'll see is the video I recorded while I was doing MLFS because I had originally planned on doing the next video after this one. Um, as part of the tail end of MLFS and I realised what I was doing was actually more to do with GLFS than it was to do with MLFS. So the next video, it kind of doesn't fit in with what you can see on the screen now. It's sort of a bit bit disjointed maybe, a bit anachronistic if you like. Um, but all it is is about installing some um, helper software for GLFS. So it's installing OpenSSL to allow me to get access to the machine remotely, installing get wget to download programs, um, install it, and then th they're the essential ones to get the build going from a remote system, and then a couple of helper programs in case I need to access the machine directly if for some reason I can't 
access it remotely just to assist um, getting access to it and that's GPM for the mouse and links to get access to web pages so you'll see that in the next video and then the video after that it will be back to this screen um, and installing GLFS from the beginning um, so to test both Steam and um, Wine I've got copies of Factorio, 32-bit Factorio. So one of them is a, a zip file with 32-bit compatible with Linux version of Factorio. It's the last versions from about 2015 or so, I think 2016, um, to prove that the gaming Linux from scratch works um, at, at a basic level. So that's without Wine and without Steam. Then I've got a an EXE version installer that will, I will be running through Wine to show that that works correctly. Um, and then through Steam, I'll be downloading and playing the Factorio demo through Steam. So there's like three three ways I should be showing how that that 32-bit game will be running. Um, in fact, I'm not sure if the game through Steam will be 32-bit. It might be 64-bit, but the fact is that Steam is 32-bit anyway. So it will prove that you can run the 32-bit program and access either a 32-bit or 64-bit game through it. And as I say, with the Wine emulator, I'll be running a 32-bit installation for Factorio. Um, I'm not sure if those 32-bit images are still available or not. Um, although there are obviously other, you may have your own 32-bit um, programs. I did try to install Windows 95 or 98 from CD uh, and that complained that it didn't have enough memory. It complained that it needed 16 megabytes of memory. So that's obviously an issue. I know there was an issue with around that time windows that didn't work very well with um, machines that had i think more than 512 kilobytes i think it was uh, megabytes of memory so that that could be what that issue was i then tried to install windows xp and the installer started running so i might show that but i, th I think i had another issue um it couldn't continue um, but I can't remember what the issue was, but the installer started running, so that was a plus. It proved that, again, the 32-bit side was working. Um, try the demo. Uh, download all the releases. Uh, so the version is... I think it's one of these dot fifteen versions. No, it looks like they might have taken the 32-bit versions away. So that means that um, you won't be able to download the 32-bit version. I I doubt very much if I'm allowed to redistribute these because it is obviously commercial software, although the demo isn't. Um, it's obviously based on commercial software, so it's unlikely that I'll be able to re redistribute them and... Um, I've not seen anything that tells me whether I can or not, so I'm not going to take a chance with that. Um, yeah, so that's a bit unfortunate. So the, uh, I've obviously got a registered version of Factorio, so um, that's the reason maybe why I've been able to access these 32-bit versions. Um, but I'll certainly show them um, being installed. Um, now it does hint here about an issue um, that you might be concerned about that obviously Linux from scratch is all about open source software it's built from sources um, MLFS was the same BLFS is the same with GLFS obviously Steam is a proprietary um, bit of code it's a binary blob as well um, so you may have issues with that um, there obviously is no source as it's a commercial product. Um, 
Wine, as far as I know, it's open source, so that wouldn't be an issue. Um, but then there's things like the video drivers. Um, so I'll be installing the NVIDIA video driver. And again, that's just a binary blob that gets installed. Um, so if you have issues with that, obviously it's going to be very limiting. I don't know how the AMD GPU Pro drivers work. I presume they're um, closed source. I, I don't know. They may be open source. I, I, I know there's differences between AMD and NVIDIA, how they release their stuff, uh, their drivers for the video cards. So I'm not sure about that. But... Um, I consider, and it seems like Debian have come around to this way of thinking as well with their current release, Debian 12, that you can't be too fanatical about having open source software. Um, you maybe have to have a little bit of leeway, um, and Debian certainly did that in releasing uh, closed source firmware on their latest, latest release. Uh, so it depends on, I guess, how, how strict you want to be and how badly you want to be able to achieve stuff that is closed source. I, I look at it as the more people can get involved in Linux and maybe pressurize these companies to release open source software, that's got to be a good thing for, for the Linux community rather than just being fanatical and, um, you know, sort of, uh, you know, screaming that you, you can't do things because these companies are bad. I, you know, probably the wrong sort of uh, way of uh, behaving I, I personally think so I think you know if you embrace everybody everybody keep everybody happy it's probably a better way of, of going around these things but that that's just my opinion so um, yeah in the next video then as I say it will be kind of a bit disjointed I'll be I say installing those four packages just to allow me to get access to the PC um, and then in the video after that next video, I'll be starting with GLFS straight off.